OK, we're taking a question from the gentleman at the back there. Um, I'd like to hear your views on uh, ab the most abstract reaches of mathematics um, and why that tells us anything about the world. As far as I can see, um, maths pro probably uh, it didn't need to be very sophisticated to, to allow us to evolve in terms of survival. It wasn't particularly attractive in the mating game, as far as I can tell from the abstract mathematicians that I know now. <laughs> um, but when Einstein went out into the most extraordinary reaches, which are purely internal in the brain, as far as I can tell, see, he came, the result came back to E equals mc squared, and he split the atom. Now, why should there be that connection there? That this is not in any way a pro-religious point. It's just something that fascinates me. Well, I think you're, there are two questions which you could be asking. What, I thought at first you were saying a question that Einstein himself, I think, asked, which was, why is the universe intelligible mathematically? And other people have asked that. What is it about um, mathematics that makes it um, the... the the, the explanation of the universe. But the other question, which I think you actually were asking, was what is the advantage to humans of having mathematical understanding? Why would natural selection, you pointed out that mathematicians don't seem to be particularly, I don't know why you say that, particularly <laughs> good at um, attracting mates. Um, uh, so, so what is the biological advantage of having a mathematical brain? Um, I share your puzzlement, but it's not just mathematics, it's also poetry, it's music, it's art, it's all kinds of things which clearly separate humans off from all other animals and seem to separate humans off from all at least naive interpretations of Darwinism. Now, my own uh, rather lame attempt to understand this is to say that uh, something about natural selection gave us big brains. The big brains were originally useful for survival and for mating. And it was a byproduct, an unforeseeable byproduct, that the big brains also happened to be good at mathematics, poetry, music, etc. Um, an analogy which I do find fairly convincing is with a computer. Computers were originally designed as calculating machines, automated, programmable calculating machines. And once you've got an automated, programmable calculating machine, you suddenly find that whether you like it or not, you've also got a word processor, a chess playing ma machine, a, s a, a simulating machine. You've got a versatile machine whose versatility wasn't originally planned, but which was inevitable in the manufacture of a calculating machine. I think the same is true of brains. Once you've got a, a brain that's become so big for good survival reasons, once it's been, got beyond, gone beyond a certain threshold of, of size for survival, then automatically it becomes capable of doing formal logic and mathematics and, and poetry. That may not seem a very satisfying explanation, but actually it does satisfy me.